Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Clean My Space channel. My name is Melissa Maker. I am an accidental cleaning expert and the host of this YouTube channel where all I do is talk about my least favorite subject, cleaning. And in this video, we are going to be talking about some cleaning hacks or some off-label uses for cleaning products and tools that have proliferated over the internet over the past however many years that I find ridiculous. So if you're curious which ones I'm about to diss, stick around. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel, give this video a thumbs up if this type of video excites you. And let me know in the comments down below which ridiculous cleaning hack you've seen in the wild that you're curious about. Now you'll notice I let my hair air dry today, but when I really want a style to hold, I'm going to grab a can of hairspray. But you know when I'm not going to grab a can of hairspray? When I have an ink stain on something. Because hairspray is not the solution for dealing with an ink stain. Now as a cleaning expert, I know my way around the cleaning world, but I also know when I can corroborate my ideas and my hunches with other experts. So I called up my friend Zach from Jeeves, New York. He's got a huge TikTok account and an Instagram following too, where he just puts all kinds of laundry and stain removal challenges out there. So I called him up and I said, I just wanna run my thoughts by you about hairspray for stain removal. And we had a conversation, we were totally simpatico about it, and here's what we discussed. Stain removal for ink can be accomplished by using an alcohol. Now, hairspray oftentimes is alcohol-based, but hairspray also includes a whole bunch of other sticky things that get your hair about yay high as needed, and you don't want that on your clothes. Zach explained it to me where hairspray effectively starches the rest of your clothing. So it's like you're getting an ink stain off, maybe, but then you're also adding a whole bunch of other sticky stuff onto your clothing that you'll then have to remove. Not to mention the fact that you're also paying for hairspray, which is expensive. Use the purest, simplest thing that can get the stain off. So if you have an ink stain, you're gonna slip a towel under the garment so that the ink stain doesn't transfer. You're going to dab it with a little bit of alcohol, not a lot, you don't want it to spread. You're gonna flush it with water and you're gonna repeat until that stain is faint. Then you can launder it and if the stain still exists, you can try again. But that's all you need to do, no hairspray, Keep it for the curls. Turtle wax for your tub, rain -X for your shower. Yeah, I've heard it all. And I've seen so many people over the years take these products that are designed for cars to be used outside and use them in their teeny tiny bathrooms with reduced ventilation and a lot of steam. But this is where we run into the issue of off-label uses and that for those of you who know me, is one of my big pet peeves. Every now and then, there is an appropriate off-label use for a cleaning product, but often, most, all the time, these products are only tested for their specific intended use, which is where the term off-label came from in the first place. Now, if a product does work off-label, that's fine. Just know that it's not tested for that off-label use, so there could be some potential um, safety issues, uh, either for yourself as a human being or for your finishes um, that might be undetermined or unknown because the product was never intended for that use in the first place. So my point is just because it could work at reducing water spots on your shower or in your tub doesn't mean you should use it. Instead, look for a product that has been purposefully designed to solve that problem. Many years ago, we did a sponsored um, video with a product called Enduro Shield. And that's exactly what it's designed for. It's a coating that you can apply to your wet surfaces to help repel water and reduce the need to uh, ever have to clean off hard water stains because the water just literally drips off. It's a pretty amazing product and you don't have to take any risks of using this unstudied stuff in your small, tight, tiny bathroom where you're breathing stuff in. Now Molly has 
nothing to do with my next point. She was just being emotionally needy. So, you know, I got to do my thing with her. Anyway, I want to talk about dryer sheets because I see people cleaning with used dryer sheets and sometimes people even recommending unused dryer sheets to help repel dust. And I want to talk about why both of these just don't make sense to me. Let's talk about the anatomy of a dryer sheet. Uh, I actually don't have any on hand because I haven't used dryer sheets in years. Dryer sheets are little sheets of woven, uh, woven fabric designed to be disposable that are impregnated with a laundry conditioner. Um, so something that's designed like a fabric softener that essentially comes off in the dryer and puts a, a very light coating onto your clothing that's designed to help keep it from being staticky and, you know, helping to keep it smell nice uh, and also to make your fabric feel a little bit softer. Now, it's totally a preference thing. It's just it's not my thing. I don't, uh, I don't particularly like them, so that's why I don't use them. Now, when you're done using a dryer sheet, you pull your wash or you pull your stuff out of the dryer, and you'll notice you've got like this little used, crumpled Kleenex looking thing, and you usually just toss it in the garbage. But some people talk about taking this used, crumply piece of fabric and they like using it for cleaning, and they say it's great for dusting. Now you know. I've done my research into dusting tools. We have a whole line of microfiber cleaning tools, Makers Clean, and I have a big beef with this dryer sheet thing because dryer sheets have nothing going for them. They're just like a crumply old piece of fabric. They push dust around. They're not absorbent. They don't particularly help attract dust. They literally just take dust and push it from one surface to another. It's like using a paper towel or using a Kleenex to do your dusting. It's not picking it up. It's not clinging onto it. It's just pushing it away. So makes no sense to me. Now on the topic of laundry products, I have seen many, many people talk about DIY laundry detergent recipes that involve anything from a Felsnaphtha bar to a Zote bar to a, a, a borax and washing soda, baking soda combination. There are all kinds of recipes out there. And the idea behind this is people say, hey, you can just whip up your own laundry detergent and you don't have to buy the stuff in store. You can save a whole bunch of money. But I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what I know about laundry detergent and laundry appliances. First of all, laundry detergents, I have never once endorsed making your own. There is so much science that goes into making laundry detergents, not only to satisfy the cleaning needs, but also to satisfy the needs of your equipment so that you keep your, laundry, uh, your washing machine running well for a long period of time. It has just never made sense to me. Not to mention the amount of time that you spend shredding up a soap bar and mixing this stuff up. It actually doesn't seem worth it to me. Finally, you know, I, I'm not one who necessarily agrees with decanting laundry detergents. And if you don't have a proper package for your laundry detergent, you also won't have any real direction on how much you should be adding per load. So it's sort of, out there and sort of up for you to decide. Now, all of that aside, when I was recently in Cincinnati with Tide, and just to be clear, this is not sponsored, but the people who were on this trip, it was myself and some other people in the cleaning online space, uh, were given the opportunity to ask questions that we constantly encountered and weren't sure how to effectively respond to. One of the questions that came up was making your own laundry detergent and how it compared to a commercial laundry detergent. Now I know what you're thinking, this is biased because I did it with Tide, but I have to tell you they took a totally unbiased approach as much as they can given that they're Tide, but they put these to the test. We made these DIY detergent recipes. We had panels of stains that were the exact same and we ran them through uh, there was a control that wasn't washed at all. There was one that was washed in just water, two that were washed in one of two recipes, and one that was washed with a Tide Pod. And the results spoke for themselves. I will show you some video of what we revealed. And the other thing that I learned is that 
A commercially made detergent is designed to suds appropriately for the machine and to provide the amount of sudsing that's required to get your clothes clean. It's kind of a Goldilocks thing. They got it just right. They were also able to account for different water hardness or water softness because the harder your water is, the less effective the soaps in your detergent will be. So if you're using a DIY detergent and you have hard water, the chemicals aren't going to be able to do the type of cleaning that you actually need, whereas a commercially made detergent has already taken this into account. I know that was a lot, I know, but I really wanted to get this point across because I know so many people wanna save money and make their own detergents, but at the end of the day, if you want your clothes to be clean, if you want to get rid of odors, if you wanna get rid of stains, just use a good quality commercially made detergent to get the job done. Okay, so the second part of this video is we just went onto the YouTube search function and we typed in cleaning hacks the second most popular video that popped up. What was the first one, Chad? Uh, that would be a clean my space <laughs> video. <laughs> Fine, that was our video. But it's actually hacks that work. This is a video um, made by 5 Minute Crafts. It's called 25 Cleaning Hacks to Speed Up Your Routine. Routine. It's got uh, almost 19 million views. Whoa. Uh, and 100,000 likes. You can no longer see the dislikes, but I gotta say, I am curious about that number. This is the first time I've seen the video and I'm gonna do a little reaction. Seriously, I've never seen this before. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, put a mop pad. What, how did they even? So she cut out a mop pad. That's a waste. Put Velcro on it and put it on the bottom of their shoes. That seems ridiculous. Baking soda, vinegar. Nope. We know that baking soda and vinegar do not. They neutralize. This would not work. Guys, this is for sure like coffee grinds or something. Absolutely not. Okay, baking soda, vinegar, we know that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Oh, just comes off perfectly with a sponge. What have we idiots been doing for so long? Stained mattress, baking soda and vinegar again, and dish soap. Nope, that would never, no, that would never get a stain out. It's like they took mud and they put it on an otherwise clean sink. Like toothpaste and coke. What is even going on here? Another fake stain, ketchup. So ketchup is often talked about as something that you can use as a brass cleaner. I have no idea why they're putting ketchup on stainless steel. Sticker, hair dryer. Okay, this one does work. I have tried it. You have to use the hairdryer for about 30 seconds, but it does work. Fine, they put one hack in these 25 that actually work. Toothpaste on a sponge. Toothpaste on a sponge to clean a bathroom faucet that oftentimes has toothpaste on it. Now toothpaste, for those of you who have brushed their teeth before, uh, is a sticky substance um, that has absolutely no business being used on a faucet. Now, I can understand the idea of using a cream cleanser to clean a faucet, but toothpaste is not that. Do I have to keep watching this garbage? Okay, I've seen enough. I am sweating. I'm worked up, I'm physically worked up after seeing that. And I would like to know if you feel the same way. It's just, it's ludicrous to me. And if you are feeling frustrated by some of this cleaning hack garbage or these, um, you know, clean influencers that create their own DIY recipes that seem utterly insane or, you know, tell you to clean something, but it actually seems like you're spending more time doing something that you should be spending way less time doing. Please let me know what they are. Send us screenshots, DM us on Instagram, tag us on things because we want to start doing more of this debunking. I think it's only fair to you. And as someone who is truly an expert in this space, I want to help guide you. My job is to save you time and to help you get the job done right the first time. 
and not wasting your money. I don't want you to waste your money on things that you don't need to. Cleaning challenges can often be resolved with very inexpensive solutions. You just have to know the right things to use. If you do want to see cleaning hacks that work, really, I encourage you to check out this video. And if you'd like to support the Clean My Space channel and get more of this great info, you can do so, of course, by subscribing to the channel. You can also check out Makers Clean, which is where all of our premium microfiber cleaning tools and other great cleaning tools are available. That's right over there. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.